The race for top four heats up as Chelsea finally find their form, Leicester and Spurs stumble, and Everton eke out a win over West Ham. We down here in the Rat Tail Bunker and Barbershop Studio, and this is the Boys and Bolos Podcast. Welcome back to the Boys and Bolos Podcast. We down here again in the Rat Tail Bunker and Barbershop Studio. Jarrett, it is week 36. Week 36 is upon us. Week 35 is over. The teams that we thought were going to get relegated, well, some of them got relegated, some of them didn't, but it is set in stone. The relegation teams are relegated with only a few games left. I really thought Fulham had a chance, and we thought maybe Newcastle would slip. We were hoping and praying Newcastle would. Well, actually, you know what? I, Newcastle's a, a historic club. You never like to see that kind of thing happen, especially for their fan base, because they're a passionate fan base. But they deserved it in that stretch of games where they were very poor. But Scotty P, though. Oh, yeah. Scotty Parker is going to be a free agent. Spurs, maybe? Maybe. He's one of the candidates. He's in the... He, he likes London. I've been hearing a lot of talk about Spurs manager, and, and everybody, like, they're looking for a Pochettino kind of like in the mold of Pochettino. I saw you put that in the chat today. You're like, uh, they're looking for a Pochettino mold. Pochettino's coming back. Yeah, <laughs> which is like the thing that makes the most sense. Pochettino, we were just, Jared and I were just talk, talking about, you know, the French League, and it looks like PSG's not going to win the French League for the first time in like 30 years or something <laughs> ridiculous. First time since the formation of soccer. It, it's actually ridiculous. Is it Marseille who's going to win? No, no, Lil. no. Lille. Lil. And so if Lil win and PSG don't win, and then obviously P- PSG is not in the Champions League final, there's a good chance that Pochettino gets sacked. Like he, that is that is like that team is worth like a billion dollars, and Lil's worth like two hundred million. They did win a cup as soon as he got there. I but think they won the French. They cup. went the but French. Like, who cup. cares? Who cares? Like, that's not. They important. win this that cup every year. That's like winning the FA Cup. You're, you're no, like, it's no. It's like winning the Euro. It's like winning the EFL Cup. Oh. That's not their domestic cup. That's like it the is, cup. but it's like in terms of like notoriety, right? And it's crap. If you only win that at PSG, you might get sacked. It's not Arsenal. You don't get a statue, aka Arteta keeps his job for seven years because they won the FA Cup one time. Granted, Dennis did correct me. Arsenal have won the FA Cup a lot historically. They are the most winners, which is cool. But I think that Pochettino could potentially be on the move. If he were to come back to Spurs, that would be insane. It'd be so funny. It'd be hilarious. It'd be so funny. He was literally sacked like five minutes ago. Yeah. They and the like he just had a really bad time after that Champions League loss. And they well, Champions League final lost. And then he just was like kinda out of it. Yeah. He was the coach for the Champions League final loss. He's Jared's looking at me like I'm crazy. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Pochettino was the coach of Spurs when they won the when they went to the Champions League final. It was Tuchel. No. It was Tuchel. Are you high? It was Tuchel. You're high on crack. It was Tuchel. No, no, no. I'm not talking PSG. I'm talking when Spurs went to the Champions League Oh, I'm final. super freaking high. <laughs> Hit the blood. Hit the blood. No, I'm sorry. I, th- I, th- I thought you were talking about PSG because no, I was going to say that was Tuchel. And Tuchel no, and Thiago about- Silva came over to England and now they're no. going back. You're right. There's some parallels there. Okay, okay, okay. But what I'm saying is Pochettino went to the... With Spurs, went to the Champions League final. Got you. Got they you, lost. Got you. That was like... That devastated... From what I hear, that devastated him to the point where he was just like burnt out. And he just wasn't into it. And that's why they were super bad that next season. Super bad. Like ninth place or something, 10th place. They were 11th place. I don't even, they were far down the table. And then, you know, the the pandemic happened and he got sacked and they brought in Mourinho and the whole thing. But either way, if Pochettino comes back, because it looks like they're looking for a, a coach like Pochettino, which is funny because if he gets sacked, he'll be available. I think even if they offered it to him, he might come back. He I don't loves think, the club. He loves Spurs. I don't think PSG will sack him. No, I don't think so either. Just because I don't think, unless they were to go get the Ajax coach, and I'm blanking on his name. Ter Stegen? No, Ter Stegen's the goalie for Barcelona. Not Ter Stegen. Not uh, Ter Stegen. Maybe they would ten, get Ter Stegen. Ten Hagen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten, ha- ten Hagen. Sure, there's like a lot of umblots in the name. I'm yeah, not very good with those, with those names. I think you're right. He would be a good pick. Hmm. Because Flick is now the German coach, that would have been another guy who PSG would have brought in. Mourinho's already going to Roma. I don't know. The, the soccer world's upside down because PSG are not going to win the French League. Lille will probably win. 
Juve is, as we were talking about, potentially not even finishing top four after winning the Coppa Italia for like, <laughs> I think, nine years straight. Bayern's still dominating the shit out of Germany. Nothing's changed there. But Italy's kind of, we're seeing new things. France, we're seeing new things. England, we're not seeing new things. And this just goes back to our conversation about the Super League. If you look at the top four teams in the, in the Champions League, three out of the four of them were going to be in the Super League. And PSG just chose not to be, but they should be because they're also petrodollars. And then look at the two top teams that are going to be in the final. Two teams that have been bankrolled in the last two decades by foreign money into the Premier League. So everyone that's complaining that soccer isn't fair, they're not seeing what is actually still happening. Oh, yeah. So even though like we've killed the Super League and that's probably an afterthought, there still needs to probably be a genuine discussion about money in soccer. Because it's so apparent. When I look at this Chelsea team, I'm like, okay, let's think this past summer who spent the most money. Ding, ding, ding. I think it was Chelsea on the entire continent. And yeah, it didn't work out for about seven months, but it's starting to fire in the last two when it, when it actually matters because they're in the FA Cup final. And they're in the Champions League final. They could and do a double. Get, and they're going to get third or fourth. And they're probably going to get third or fourth. They could do a double. And so, yes, you have to spend money to be competitive at this time. Yeah. You look at a team like West Ham, they overachieved. Everton overachieved for probably, out of the 35 weeks we've played, probably 20 of them, 25 of them. They won some games they shouldn't have won. Everton with the first game against Spurs and go all the way back to that. They had a little luck on their side. They were able to move the ball up. They were left in push back. They had a good goal, but they overachieved most of the season. And a lot, and a lot of luck. If you look at Everton and if you look at West Ham, goal differential, very, very, very low goal differential. West Ham's at 10. Everton's only at 4. Exactly. And then you look at Spurs and you look at... Tottenham's at 20. Yep. <laughs> Liverpool's at 18. You know, so when you look at the table and the way it will shake out, and we're, we're going to talk about this right now, the top four from where we are with only three games out. Man City will win. Manchester United will likely finish second. Then you have Chelsea, Leicester. I think it's going to be Liverpool or Spurs in that fifth spot. Or in the fifth, sixth spots. I'm not really sure. I think Spurs could potentially finish higher than Liverpool, which would be cool. And then you'll have West Ham, Everton, Arsenal, somewhere around there. But those top six teams are the clubs that spend the most money. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Like if you look, if you measure the teams of who spent the most next to the the final table, and we should do this, and we'll post it on Instagram and across social, it will be almost like maybe there'll be two things that will be out of whack. Yeah, maybe. But like, and you can attribute probably those to injuries. Liverpool, totally, totally. If if Van Dyke doesn't get injured and they don't lose Jota, top three. I don't think there's any. Right. No one's really going to argue with that because they've had unreal injuries this past year. Yeah, it's it's asinine to start talking about how the Super League was going to ruin football when you already have teams that are just able to spend as much money as they can and 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 just d- break any and just basically put their middle finger to financial fair play because in my in my picture in my account, sorry, in my view of the how the this whole Champions League thing has played out with Manchester City is that they shouldn't even be in the competition. They shouldn't they be got in the competition. Can't, they, got, they got barred. And then they appealed it. And they probably paid off FIFA. And all you Manchester City fans who listen to this podcast are going to get pissed at me. But you know what? Pep Guardiola is not some mastermind. He spends the most money and they buy the best players. They put the best players in the field. They have two starting 11s that could win the Premier League. And now they're in the Champions League final. They barely lost to Chelsea to get to the FA Cup final, and so and they won the Europa League, and they won the uh, EFL Cup. So d- enough of that. Enough of like them building a great team. Blah blah blah. Yeah, they built it because they spent the most money. They built it. Cut the shit. Cut the shit with that. Like they're they're petro dollars. They shouldn't be in the Champions League. And I'm and I have no horse in the race because I'm I'm a Spurs fan who's who's who weren't even, wasn't even in the competition this year. It's. It's absolutely, it's actually like disgusting for 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 city fans on the one on one side to say we don't want the Super League, we don't we think it's dis- we think it's so bad, we think it's it's against all of what English football is, and then on the other hand celebrate their champions, their potential Champions League win, their <laughs> EFL Cup win, and their uh, and their uh, league title. League title. 
it's the same here with that. It's the same thing for Chelsea fans. It's bittersweet. It's, get out of here. If with I that. were, if I were to have been one of the people outside Stanford Bridge, saying like, you know, give this us back our, our this club. is our club. Yeah, this is our club. You can't also then celebrate them getting to the Champions League final and potentially winning. I just, it seems a little. There seems to be a lot of hypocrisy in that. Yeah. Because we're already playing a rigged game. As a Chelsea fan, it's already a rigged game. Yeah. We should win. 70% of the games we play just because we should honestly outclass all the teams we play. We spent 250, 240, 200 something, almost a quarter of a billion dollars. If you go this back past to the Pulis- Pulisic trade, it's like 250 million. If you go back to the Pulisic, I think it's, yeah, about 250, 260. Yeah. And so, yeah, we should. Like, we have more money. Literally, <laughs> Timo Werner is worth more than probably a lot of championship sides put together. Absolutely. Havertz is worth more, actually. Team was only million. sixty. Yeah. Havertz was eighty something million. Anyways, it's 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 wild to see, and we see the relegation now. So all the all that's official. So Sheffield, West Brom, Fulham will be going down, and as we look to the finish, there's still a mathematical way that some teams can get in, but I think it's going to come down. Top four is really going to come down to Chelsea, Leicester, West Ham, and Liverpool, and out of those. I think Chelsea's in. I think they have the easier... They, they don't have the easier, excuse me. They, they just have to probably get the least amount of points because right now they're the highest up in the table, which is an obvious statement. But I also think Chelsea right now is in an amazing moment. Kai Havertz is playing well. Yeah. Timo Werner is being a little bit more positive and a little bit more clinical. Not saying he's a number nine that the world needs, that Chelsea needs, but I don't know. Chelsea's in a great place. Christian Pulisic is playing well. And Golo Kante is... Reminding everyone why he's probably the best holding midfielder on the planet and has been for five to six years, in my opinion, since Leicester won. I I, think I I think Chelsea squeaking out that win against City really showed people that despite their really tough schedule in the last four or five games, that they're able to they're gonna they're not gonna lose any games, in my opinion. They're just they're so solid defensively. Whether they play even when they play a four back, they're not that bad. You know, they play a three back solid. They if play, we play a four a back, back, even the four back, like they they might get exposed a little bit and they get a goal scored. As them. long as it had Thiago Silva, it's okay. It's okay. But yeah. with a three back with Thiago Silva in the middle and then it's two really stumps good. next to him, we've given up like nothing. Not a lot of goals. Yeah. We played Guardiola twice. We we beat them twice. Play Real Madrid. We played Zidane twice. We beat them twice. Yep. We've played Mourinho, beat them. We've played Klopp. Beat them. There was a list of like all the scalps Tuchel has taken in like four months. He, I mean, if he wins the Champions League and the FA Cup, I, I think he's the coach of the year in Europe. You know how they have yeah. like the European awards. He'll I just don't know a, how he's not. He's also probably getting a contract extension at that point. No, oh, he's definitely getting the contract yeah. extension. I, I don't know who else would win it. Guardiola can't win it for me with City. I, he just he can't. He can't. If he wins the Champions League, okay, then I think there's a conversation. But if he just wins the league and loses the Champions League. City should be for me. City on paper probably are the favorites in the Champions League final, but energetically, Chelsea after what we did in 2012, where we went to Bayern and we win, where and we won in the history. They went out. It. They went out and they spent 80 million dollars. They overspent a Ruben Diaz when only every other club. You think they overspent? No, no, no. no. I, I'm saying the wrong thing. They they gave the best transfer fee. On Ruben Diaz, even though there were a lot of other clubs who had an interest in Ruben Diaz from Benfica, who were only willing to pay thirty, forty, oh, okay, million. They, so they oh, they overbid. So they, they overbid. They got a player that they thought was really good, which says that their scouting is very good, right? They got the best, literally the best center back in the world. He's the best center back in the world for sure. And Sorry he made back. John Stones the be- one of the best center backs in England. Who's back on the national team? He was iced out. John Stones was not in the conversation. Now he's playing. He's going to be in the Euros, right? And he'll he'll probably have a bad time because he's not playing next to Ruben Diaz. But they he said he's playing next to Slabhead. He's playing next to Slabhead, Slabhead, yeah. which will be a hilarious duo. The English Carlos Puyol. Yeah, they're <laughs> going to have. Uh, it's going to be an interesting summer to see a lot of like superstar, super, quote unquote, superstars in England try to win the Euro. But. uh <laughs> Because I still think Portugal, for pound for pound, just is going to just, I don't know if they're going to dominate, but they're just going to like somehow get it done. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyways, go, anyway. Go, go back anyway. to your point. Go back to your point my about point, Man City. My point about Man City is that they they were able to spend 
a shitload of money in that transfer season. They got they literally they're they're the best center back in the world makes that defense so much better. Like they brought in Ake for like twenty five million to thirty million. He doesn't play. They brought him in to sit down. They brought him in as a backup to the backup. He was he was the uh, he's the he's the Donny Van. De they Beek basically of Man City. they basically bought him so nobody else would buy him. They bought a player to fill there. I think he's a uh, I think he's homegrown. Basically, I think he's homegrown. He's, homegrown. he's decent. He's homegrown. He fills a, a homegrown, uh, you know, player sp- spot, and he's not in any other team. Literally, they buy players. They have the ability to buy players, so nobody buys them. So nobody else buys them. That's, that, and that, uh, if you think about it in that context, that's fucked. That's absolutely fucked. Do you think that's why they bought Ake? I think so. That's so one we didn't of the go reasons. Back to Chelsea, essentially. Yeah, I think I think the, part of it is that they needed a backup, obviously, but also because. By taking away a, a solid center back from another English club that can fill that needs that English quota, they're then then scraping a championship player. It's true. They're they're doing a Roden, but Roden's not Roden's Welsh, so he's not actually not. But either way, they're they're not scraping. No, but I'm ch- saying Roden in the sense that now you have to go down to the yes. championship to find a player exactly. because. Abroad, think they're not going to give him up. I, I I always think about this shit in like in like money and and like out. That's ga- uh, that's out like out. That's Game of Thrones level. It's Jeff. fucking Game of Thrones level. And if you don't think that way, especially for young players and like English players, then you then you don't understand English football because that is happening all the time. And they they have to fill X amount of spots on their team for homegrown players. And if you look at City, and I've said this before, look at City. How many homegrown players actually play? On City. Three. Oh. Sterling, Stones, and uh, uh, Walker. That's it. And Sterling's a bottler, so that he got benched, and he only plays against chumps. And <laughs> I, I, Walker's good, but they got him from Spurs, and obviously they probably overpaid for him. But he Foden. Foden. Phil Foden. Foden. So Phil Foden. Foden's Phil legit. I will give Foden as much credit as he's. But deserves. then they have Cole Palmer, Thomas Doyle. Who? Who? Two of their backups are both English. i have two guys I've literally never heard of. I'll say their names: Scott Carson and James Trafford. Sorry, either are of those, those goalkeepers. Are yeah, both yep. goalkeepers. Luke Embede Tabu, never heard of. Also an English guy. And then Liam Delap. There's a lot of top clubs that do this, right? And I'm not. It's it's part of like the whole game. But like you have to think in those in that context when you think of City, like they're gonna overpay for a player who's English, which most players, most in the English Premier League, they all do that. They have to all English players who are somewhat good get are worth more than a foreign player who's good because of the quota. Because of quota, Ari, there's a premium on him. So if Ake's if Ake is homegrown, then and he's a center back, which is like hard to find. They're going to overpay, and then so other some other club can't get him because there's other clubs that he he would definitely start on. Well, then this leads me to the question: Harry Kane is probably going to stay in the Premier League because he can score in the Premier League. Yep, he's homegrown. Yep, and so he's probably going to go to Chelsea or Manchester United or City or City. Okay. Well, I heard that, and I'm not. I love Harry Kane. I think he's a great player. I think his ankles are popsicle sticks, and he's in his tw- he's 28. So, but. I, he did come out and say, you know, I want to. I, I think that the management of of Spurs should listen to offers. I think he he understand. He wants to win a cup. He wants to win trophies. He loves Spurs. Obviously, he seems like a Van Persie because Van Persie was at Arsenal for a long time, right? Through and through, like he, he was there since Henri. Like that dude's OG. Left and then won with United, right? And I remember when they had to do the honor guard. Arsenal for United and he like came out and he got booed. This was probably at the Emirates. I don't think it was at Highbury. But anyways, I felt like there was a mixed crowd because it wasn't like a full boo. I saw some other people like, yeah, you had to leave to win the Premier League. We get it. Like we're not doing that. And I feel like Spurs fans would probably be really appreciative of his time and like his professionalism. Yeah, I mean they aren't gonna the only way that Spurs can rebuild and is to sell him. Is to sell him because you're gonna get Around 100 million pounds for him. Um, I don't know if it's going to be 90. I don't know if it's going to be 120. I don't know if it's going to be 150. I don't think it's going to be 150. I think he's he's got a couple years left. He's homegrown. 
He's not going to go to Barca, Barca. He's not going to go to Real Madrid. He's not going to I'd go say to, he's worth 90. I think he's worth 90. But it could go to 110 if he has a good Euros. True. His price tag is so many, like so many players in this transfer window will be tied directly to their Euro, their Euro play because he and Lukaku came out in the World Cup in 2018 flying, scoring goals like fun. They both had four goals out of the group stage. And then they almost, and then someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but then I don't think either of them scored after. Because they just, I and so I'm interested to see if Lukaku comes back because that dude has played on Everton, he's played on West Brom, he's played on United, he's played on Chelsea, and he's never found his footing in the Premier League. If any, mark my word, if any Premier League teams picks up Lukaku, it will be for naught. He can go kill it in the Italian league. Dude, that's he, cool, bro. He, he won. That's he cool, basically, bro. If he basically. Carry Inter Milan on his back, and I, but I'm but I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed. Uh, no, neither am I. But I'm I'm saying that his value, Lukaku's value, is not a ninety million dollar value. You think it's less or more? It's less, because I think actually on the market he might go for more, depending he's young, upon. He, he's the same age as King. I think he's just in better shape. I think his ankles aren't popsicle sticks. Mm. He's, just, he's I, more durable, you mean? Yeah, I just think yeah. he's less injury prone. There's another way of saying more durable. I'm interested to see. I think the Euros are so telling. That is like pump and dump. You know, like you could score five goals in the Euros and people kind of think you're great. And then all of a sudden you're doubling your market value. So I think whoever has a doubling, though. I don't know. If yeah, he goes go golden could, boot in the Euros, if Kane goes golden boot in the Euros, let's. 110. Yeah, okay. 110. I, I, if England go to minimally some semifinals with that team, he, he can't. He, he can't. Yeah, he can't. They can't just like beat the shit out of the Faroe Islands. I know the Faroe Islands aren't in the, the European Championships. I'm just saying, like, yeah. they can't beat the shit out of the weakest team in the group. He scores a hat trick. Everyone's like, oh, he's freaking god, and then they don't even get past the quarters. Like England has to stop underachieving. But here's on the thing: some level in these in these finals Eng- in these cups, dude. Uh, we're gonna talk about England a little bit right now. England's. Not going to score that many goals. They're going to get scored on. They're not that good defensively. Dude, they got, okay, they got Stones, Slabhead, McGuizzi, and they got Jordan, take your ACL Pickford. They're OG in the back. They're good. Uh, Honestly, you want to when it comes down to England? You want to talk about England? It all has to do with if Jordan Henderson can sit in the middle. Because Jordan Henderson? Jordan Henderson. Oh, okay, yeah. It, they're holding midfielders. That's That's hurt. always been it. Is that what I'm saying? So, so right now, if I'm if I'm England, my my central midfield, Declan Rice holding, Mason Mount right in front of him, and then I got Phil Foden in the ten, the dumbest thing. That would be so wild to have Phil Foden sitting there. Harry Kane up top. I put Sterling out on one side. They'll probably play. Actually, I don't know. I'm setting it up in a four five one, mm. and then I put Jaden Sancho on the other side. Yeah, that's you dirty. J- Jaden Sancho, Sterling, just like. Uh, see, I don't think J- Sterling. I think Sterling actually. He's not okay. A, okay. Uh, okay. So let's a finisher. Okay. So but let's, he causes problems. But let but, but you have to respect like his. But runs. let's take Sterling out. Let's take Sterling out. Yeah. Kane in the middle. Yep. Sancho, Foden. Yep. Jude Bellingham okay. in the ten, who looked phenomenal for Bayern. Uh, for for for, for for Borussia. Excuse me. Yep. Who looked phenomenal? And then Mason out behind him and Declan Rice. You got Kyle Walker on one side, Stones and Maguire in the middle, and Chilwell, and Chilweezy, and Pickford and goal. Like that's a very very nice team. Now can that team play together? Mm. Uh, I just don't know. I just don't know, but I will I know, say they toyed. They've toyed with playing. They've toyed with Grealish in the middle. They've toyed with Grealish. Is, in the Grealish middle. is probably ahead of Jude in in that like thing we just kind of rolled out, but he's been injured, and I don't know. Yeah, I, on paper, I mean, everybody's always talks about England on paper, but then when they go they go out and they do it, it always it's always kind of a disaster. I, I I just think that there's a very high likelihood of Stones and Maguire just getting roasted in the middle. By some of this faster, they could play a three back. Then honestly, they should just look at what Chelsea's done. Like every team should be looking at what Chelsea's done. We had a sieve of a back line, and if you don't take out the West Brom in the last four months, because that was an anomaly, that was the exception, not the rule of our current defensive strengths. We've gone from a team that was just dog shit. Like we would give up so many goals over the you last Kepa. two Kepa two was seasons. The problem, we dude. had Kepa, but still, dude, Rudiger looks so bad now. But, Rudiger's but somehow like a Mendy, changed man. Mendy, Mendy is commands Mendy's, that back for that me. Back three or back four, whatever. Top it is. ten in the world right now. Mendy, he's made. Mendy is much better than Kepa, and I don't mean shot stopping. I mean he is. He can. You can see him. He's like yeah. telling and people marshalling, what to do. and marshalling, and marshalling the back line. <laughs> 
So, and I don't know if Pickford's at that level, but and Pickford does make a lot of good saves. We'll see. I don't want to talk about England anymore. Let's just talk about the next week. Let's just talk about it. Let's just get it. Let's just get into. Let's just get into week thirty six. Yeah, let's not talk about our colonial fathers anymore. Yeah, I because <sighs> week thirty six. Hold on, to your butts. We start off tomorrow with Manchester United and Leicester City. If Man U win this, and then we beat Leicester, we're top four, almost mathematically. Sure. So I'm actually rooting for Man U in this game. Me too. What do you What do you think? I think two nothing. No. Less. Uh two to one. Meh. Wednesday, Madison has to show up. That's what I have to say about that. Facts. Facts. Wednesday is a big game for Chelsea, because I don't. I'd Good, like to win the game the big for points. Game. Big midweek game. I'd like to win the game for the points, yeah. but more so my just general ego will be shot in the face if they lose this game. We play Arsenal. Where Arsenal is right now and where Chelsea is, this game should be over before it starts. Yeah, especially Arsenal after last zero last confidence. Last game. Yeah. Arsenal has zero confidence. But this is after we played them in the fall. Saka had that cross which went in. Shaka hit a 30-yard freaking bomb into the top corner. And I forget the other goal that they had. It was a it was whatever. It was back when you guys were in shambles. It was back when the shambles was on. Everyone was just being kind to Frank. It was bad. We didn't I, I don't even know in that game if we had Mendy. I'm really not sure. I don't I don't think we did. Actually, I'm really don't think we did. Because he's had like <laughs> most of his games have been shutouts for Chelsea, which is unreal. So I'm gonna go with Chelsea three nothing. I think we're gonna fucking lay into them. Pardon two, my Spanish. Two nothing. Two nothing. Two nothing. Just because you guys, uh, can't, Werner can't finish. But that's if Chelsea were to win this game, or more specifically, if Arsenal is to lose this game, and Leeds wins, Arsenal's in tenth, and Aston Villa has games in hand. So Arsenal, by the end of, you know, Arsenal's flirting with definitely finishing out of the top ten, which is honestly where we put them. We said the highest is eighth and the lowest is twelfth. So if they finish eleventh. We're kind of we're still within they're, our our they're our, a mid they're a mid table club our range and what we're talking about is on. They used to just fight for the championship. Then they fought for top four. Then they were excited about top six. Now they're somewhere between eight to twelfth. You let that go on long enough and compound, they're getting relegated in two or three seasons. Yep. I know that that sounds crazy, but it's not. It's, it's not. really not because that's be, just that's the trajectory. You know, they're you know on. what it really is. They they become a team like Newcastle. Yeah, but they don't spend like Newcastle. This William buy was one of the worst pieces of business I have ever seen. Guy done. puts in one goal. One goal in 37, 37 matches English. played. Terrible. 200k a week. And and honestly, if you look at that game and if you look at that play, that whole the way that play went down, <laughs> Arsenal player muscled the guy off the wall. The only reason that was like a clear shot was because there was a foul while that play was happening. I don't even think that foul was a foul. I was, I like watched that. I thought he dove. I thought Sabayos took a. I think it was Sabayos. I thought yeah. he just took a swarm. But neither here nor there. Arsenal is not spending wisely, and that's something they used to do under Wenger, and they're just not keeping with it. So, anyways, I think Chelsea will win. I say three nothing. You say two nothing. Next game, Newcastle United, Man City. Man City will win this game and then win the title. Newcastle have nothing left to play for. They're not going to be relegated, and I think Man City are going to use the rest of the games this season to basically try out different formations that they could probably use against Chelsea and they're going to get experiment they're going to experiment a little and they're also going to probably go into their bench so you're going to see guys who don't get a lot of time that want to go out and show out and there's a there's so much room against Newcastle to destroy so I see this game three nothing as well agree Burnley leads United a Leeds win and with an Arsenal loss against Chelsea puts them ahead and drops Arsenal to ninth I'm going to go I'm actually going to go a tie on this Burnley's brutal I'm going to go one one yeah, Leeds are going to think they're going to come out and smash Burnley because they they beat uh, <laughs> they beat Spurs and we didn't talk about the Spurs game at all against Leeds, but there was a lot of things that could have went right for Spurs that just didn't officiating wise and just like I I think that Melier Mel- their goalie had one of the best games of his career made some stops. I mean, obviously Larice always makes great stops and that's just like kind of how their defense works. But Spurs, it's not like Spurs were on their back foot so that of that game and so Leeds coming off a win that looks a lot more impressive than the actual game that went on. I think it was a more of a two-two draw kind of game, and uh, yeah, I think that Leeds are going to be in, a, in for a little shock against a very, very, very stout Burnley team who doesn't give up all the goals. Do you think one-one's accurate? I, I think, I think it could be two-two. 
Okay. Next game. Southampton Fulham. Actually, to be I'm gonna go backwards a little bit. I think Leeds are gonna win this. Two one. Two to one. Okay. Southampton Fulham. This is gonna be a game zero people will watch. Fulham is relegated. <laughs> Southampton's dog not shit. playing the best soccer. Dog I'm, shit. I'm gonna say dog shit. I'm not even gonna give a score prediction. Yeah, let's just move on. That's what happens. It's terrible. Oof. Brighton Hove, West Ham. Could Brighton Hove beat West Ham? No. I think West Ham win this, and they keep the pressure on the top four. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be a solid 2-2-0 two, two win. I agree. Yeah. Sunday, we got Crystal Palace, Aston Villa. Ugh. Aston Villa is just... <laughs> I no mean, there Grealish, was, right? No Grealish, and I, I mean, I don't believe he's going to be playing. Now, they're in 11th on 48 points, but they have two games in hand. So, Aston Villa is a team that could still... They could still make some moves. They could still mathematically cause problems for Europa League. But that's assuming, obviously, the fate's not just in their hands. Tottenham will have to lose some games. Everton will have to lose some games and not just win out. Uh, Aston Villa won't just be able to win out. I do think Aston Villa will win this game. I don't think Aston Villa, uh, in terms of like what their player, their mindset is, it's like they were so much in that relegation fight last season, right? And then they were flirting with top four this season. And now they're like very comfortable not getting relegated. I think they're just happy to be a team that's just like not worried. Struggling. Struggling. You know, they're fighting for the relegation. Fighting for it. Yeah, because they, they came down to the last game. Last game of the season. And so whatever th- wherever they finish right now, it's gravy. There's no pressure on them, right? So that could either work in their advantage where they're just like kind of playing whatever they're a soccer because they they don't the result a win or a loss isn't Conse- hugely consequential for them. I mean, they could get it's, into Europe. Yeah, they could get. In, they could. They could easily finish in that six or seven place spot for sure. They could get in Europe. Yep. What I, I'm going to go two one Aston Villa. No, I think it's going to be a one one draw. Okay. Tottenham Wolves. Uh, you guys I mean, need this game. We need this game. We tied Wolves last time on a late uh, goal. I think we. We were playing a very like park the bus type Mourinho style game last time, and we just didn't, weren't attacking. I think Ryan Mason has really shown that like he doesn't care. Like he just wants to them to play Tottenham style football, which is like press and push. Whether those these players can do that and not give up a lot of goals, that is the question. Like these players are just maybe just not good enough to do that. But then then again, you got Kane and Son, and they they <laughs> they got a they got a goal call back on, a, on an offsides call that was very uh, hairline uh, against Leeds. I think Leeds is actually better than Wolves right now, and so I can't see Spur. I can't see Spurs like. I think Spurs should win this game. Three, two, three, one. three to one or two, three to two maybe. A, go- a one goal game, the, but the a bottom win for Spurs. line is, is everybody complains about how Spurs defense is shit, right? And the dire shit. Yes, we all know dire shit. We all know they're gonna give up a couple goals. They should be able to score three or four goals a game. They got fucking Harry Kane, Gareth Bale, and and Son and. They should score goals. There's more of Lamella. They have a, they they have a, lot, a of lot of weapons, right? And so if they're playing attacking football, pressing football, they they should be able to do that. I think there's a question about their fitness, a question about whether they can actually press all game and keep it going. That's a whole other conversation. But this is not like a shitty team. Like we know their defense is a little bit leaky, a little bit civvy, but like it's that's the way Tottenham play football. Stop with like the comparisons. We have to have the, the best center backs in the league. But we're never gonna have the best in your back. We're taught in them. It's like that's this is the this is the shit you deal with. Like just get over it. Like D- Dyer is a center defensive middle player. He's not a center back. He's gonna ball watch. He doesn't know how to play center back. Shut up. That's Tottenham it. is the well alcohol of the bar. You know what you're gonna get. You know what you're gonna get. They're Spursy. Own it. Just move on. Like I So they're gonna win by a goal? I think they're winning by a goal. One goal. West, it's gonna be tight. West Brom Liverpool. West Brom oh, relegated. Liverpool's, Liverpool's going to win. This is going to be Liverpool the, needs the win. This is, be, this is going to be the the mini bat game of the week. Oh, I think sure. Liverpool is going to just Walk take it, him. take it to them. Finally, this game would be a banana peel, and this game would probably, definitely, mathematically put Everton out of the top four and just For have sure. them focus on top six. Everton Sheffield. I mean, Everton's good. like Everton. Obviously, Everton, are a better Everton, team. Everton's a way better team than Sheffield. Way better. But it's just one of those games where Everton has to win. Has to. Has and to Sheffield win. just needs to show up and play. Those players are now just those players. Honestly, are now just playing to see if they can get poached. Yeah. Or they're going back down to the championship. 
Yeah, and there there aren't that many players that are definitely starting Premier League level players. So, yeah, I mean, like if you're a McBurney or if you're you know some of Mc, oh McGoldrick, McGoldrick, then uh, you're you're gonna want to show up and score a goal or two. So, I you know I'd love to see everyone lose, but I realistically don't see it happening. I see a two nothing win. As do I. Okay, and that's it. Week 36. Damn, dude. Starts tomorrow. Well, we're recording Monday night. This should be out tomorrow morning, but tomorrow night, tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow is the United game, United-Leicester, which will be great. An, an afternoon game, which is going to be great. Just want, one to Lester, just want to see Leicester continue that slide. And they have a tough schedule. Chelsea-Arsenal Wednesday. Wednesday. That's going to be fire. Fire for fire. We man. just, it's mostly we just want to see Arsenal get their shit kicked in. Right? I think Arsenal is that what we want to see. We just want to see their. You shit know what? I want to see shit. a competitive Arsenal. And do I, you though? Yeah, but listen. But I'm past them being competitive this season because now neither of us are worried about Arsenal. And normally you'd have to worry about Arsenal. Oh, are they going to finish ahead? Are they going to be near? They need to honestly be baptized by fire. They need to do bad poorly now, so that way they make some decisions. They need to make some decisions. <laughs> they need to get. They need to get. Well, I don't know how they can like break contracts, but they got to figure out that a bot because. That Aubameyang, Aubameyang is the new Ozil. Yeah. He's the new Ozil. And Willian is the new uh, Dunkersaurus. What's that guy's name? <laughs> Gunnersaurus. Gunnersaurus. They just hang out. They just chill. They're in the clubhouse getting litty on money that Arsenal just gives them. That club is poorly run. You yeah. should never do something that your enemy won't do. And Chelsea was like, oh, we're not going to give you two years, my G. You're getting old. And Arsenal's like, we got you. We'll give you three. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you guys are, same you guys are con- bad. Same contract. 200k a week at a year 10 million a year oh my god dude oh my god. anyway i think we're good yeah we're not gonna talk about fantasy no Your uh, boy's oz is one fifth. i'm still sitting in fifth oh yeah we dropped new swag it's on instagram and facebook uh it's our no racism tea that merch store is opening up this weekend so get excited be on the lookout for that i don't got any i don't got any announcements uh champions league is happening eventually final Oh, yeah. Well, Champions League is in Wembley. That's the only announcement. Oh, yeah. That's the announcement about Champions League. It's It's not going to be in Istanbul. That's right. It's great news. Well, ciao. Ciao. Thanks for listening to the Boys and Bolos podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Twitch, at Boys and Bolos. If you'd like to be a guest, please reach out. You can hit us on any of the social media accounts that Jeff just mentioned or email us directly at boysandbolos at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and see you next time.